Welcome back to Cody Crafted. Today, our FJ60 project has returned. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Let's go build something cool. So as the first part of our installation for the Sniper and LRA 40 gallon replacement tank is we wanted to run a tank that was set up for fuel injection. So this tank is actually for a 62 series, not a 60 series. This vehicle is an 84, 83, 84. Um, this tank is actually for an 88. Physically bolts in, the only difference is the later models were fuel injected. Um, part of that, the pickup is set up a little different. It's a little lower profile the way it's designed. Um, and the guys at Mosley Motors recommend that you use the later model tank when doing this conversion so that you've got the space to fit an in-tank fuel pump down inside. It's quieter, the pump runs cooler, they last longer. It's just a better way to go. That's how they run them from the factory since the 80s. Works that way much better. All right, everything's all prepped. A uh, little bit of heat gun action will soften this uh, tube up enough where you can do something with it. Uh, return line dumped straight into the pickup sock uh, per the instructions. Also, that's just a good way to do it. Uh, there is a little cavity down inside that, that's uh, baffled, so that kind of holds the uh, fuel in the pickup area. So, uh, yeah, time to put this puppy in. So you just slip her down in there. Uh, we did have to do some measuring to make sure, but no prob. Alrighty, we're back. Uh, as you can tell, our old sender is pretty funky. It actually was stuck. It was stuck at full. And so um, I had to like pry on it. Yeah. Junk. So our new one is here. It is from Toyota, straight from the dealership. Got the old school Toyota logo in it. it says FJ60. That's pretty cool. It has an arrow going forward. So that's sweet. The clocking is correct, but the depth is not. We'd be empty at a half a tank. We got 40-ish gallons here. All right, so LRA sends us this little guy right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend this wire. Pretty simple task. Uh, we're just going to cut it. I'm going to cut it right down here so that it doesn't get too hot up here. And uh, we're going to weld this. We've got 10 millimeters of overlap on each side. So we're going to mark that. And we're going to try to get our clocking as correct as we can. And then that way our fuel level gauge will read appropriately. So let's, uh, let's get our cut on and uh, get her welded. cool there's a little dot right here and there's a little dot right here makes it line up because it's asymmetrical all right got our brackets in oh we gotta put a washer on there lra is really good about making sure that you've got some slop here um so that's nice. You got a little adjustment. These little brackets work pretty well. Somebody had their thinking noodle working on this deal. Cool. All right, and then we use the stock bolts in the front and we got to connect this guy. And uh, yeah, I think that's just about the most of it. Let's see if that doesn't get in our way. Okay, this is the front. You ready to go, Trayvon? Yeah. About that time, eh, chap? Oh, yeah. All right, all our clamps are tight. We got our return line. We got tape on it to mark it and tape on our feed. And we got our wires ready to connect. And we got a little weather pack action. And uh, uh, let's rock and also roll. And slide it on in. Oop. Oh, there goes my $7 light. Dang it. Dang it. 
All right, children, here's what we're looking at here. Yeah, that, that, pardon the zebra effect from the light, that's gonna interfere. Yep, that's gonna have to change. Okie dokie, saws all. Okay, exhaust is now out of the way. And we're moving on up. Well, we're moving on up. We're moving on up. Okay. That one will go. Tidy those up a little bit. All right, and we're back on our sniper install. Um, short version is there's not a ton of info out there about this kit. Uh, Mosley doesn't have a actual instruction page. So I'm gonna kind of give you a rundown. Um, I've been in contact with those guys and they're helpful. They're answering texts on Saturday, so that's cool. Uh, but much like the rest of you, I'd rather not have to answer texts on Saturdays and I'm sure they wouldn't either. So if you found this video looking for how to do this install, welcome. All right, short version so far. You disconnect the fuel line to the carburetor. You disconnect all the vacuum hoses to the carburetor and the one little plug. Um, none of that stuff gets reused. All the vacuum lines that go to the carburetor get blocked off. Okay, with your kit, you're gonna get this adapter to mount your throttle body onto your factory intake. Um, Allen bolts go down, hex bolts come up from the bottom. There's actually a machined off ridge on this side. It's pretty obvious. It keeps this heat shield uh, from interfering with the, the adapter flange sitting level. I went ahead and put a little silicone on the underneath side of the heads of the bolts and ran the nuts down, mostly because I didn't want to have to fight them. Um, don't know that you necessarily had to do that. This one's going to fall through. Uh, but the rest of them are kind of captured in there. I don't know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. This vacuum hose here uh, will interfere with the linkage. Uh, I am told that it can just be cut off and capped. So that's cool. Um, probably just pinch that. Uh, you could knock it out, drill it, and tap it if you have the intake off, but we're not going to all that trouble. So this thing's kind of useless. We yank this off. There we go. All good. And uh, this little vacuum thing, and then you got this vacuum vent hose that goes down here, and then you got this one that goes right here, and it went into the carburetor and all that fun stuff, and we don't really care. It's going away. It's going away. It's going away. We don't care. Bye-bye. It's going away. That's what it is. So what I'm doing right now is I'm checking to see how far the linkage interferes with this uh, vacuum hose and it's basically just where it's been up so we'll set this guy aside for a second and the only real interference problem here is kind of this bent up part so we'll cut it off right about here and then we'll just cap that so you can basically just cut it kind of in the middle all right we are back on the 60 and it is uh time to start this party so first start up. All right, go ahead, turn the key on. And we are live. All right, so wizard. Wizard. <laughs> give, her a, give her a try. At this point, we have got a vacuum leak somewhere causing uh, this thing to suck air. Um, because me putting my hand over the throttle body like this, it should have pretty much killed it. Um, so something's sucking air somewhere. So we gotta figure that out. But, it's alive. Alive, <laughs> it's alive. Okay, uh, so the gasket under the throttle body. 
Uh, not the one that came with the sniper, but the one that was already on it. Seems to be the issue when I'm spraying right in on this heat shield gasket thing. I can spray under it, right under there, and uh, and I can get it to burble. So not a huge deal. We'll shut full throttle body off, uh, which is actually not that big of a deal, and fix that leak. But no problem. This is why you pay a professional. Hey, we're ready to test drive. That is it. Our FJ60 is ready to roll. Follow him on Instagram at the goat FJ60 right here. And we sure appreciate it. Robert, thank you again. Have a great day, sir. Look at that, didn't take an act of Congress. All right, guys, be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you like what we do here. We sure appreciate it. Jump in the comments below. Tell us what you think about doing fuel injection on old school Toyotas, because I think it's awesome. That thing completely changed the way it drives. Matter of fact, when he first got here and test drove it, he was like burning the clutch because he's, he's like, oh, it revs up so much better. So we sure appreciate it. If you need something like this done, give us a shout, shoot me an email, and we will see you on the next one.